If you think a place centered around specific media from pop culture would neither age well or live long, you'd be right. Today we look at Dogpatch USA, a theme park based completely on Lil Abner, a comic strip about hillbillies written and illustrated by Alfred Kaplan, better known as Al Cap. On a scenic piece of land in the Ozarks off northwest Arkansas's Highway 7, a man named Albert Rainey purchased a trout farm in the 1940s. It, along with nearby Mystic Caverns, looked mighty attractive to realtor O.J. Snow as a prospective amusement park when Rainey put the area up for sale in 1966. So, he gathered a few of his investor friends and formed REI, or Recreation Enterprises Incorporated. No relation to the outdoors and sports equipment store. They got in contact with Al Cap, and I find this hilarious. They told him the park would be quiet and dignified and wouldn't have any roller coasters or thrill rides that would conflict with the hillbilly themes of Lil Abner. Makes me wonder if they'd actually read the comic strip. Anyway, Cap agreed came to the groundbreaking in 1967 and is reported as saying, This is the one which will finally gain me some respect for my grandchildren, who until now have always thought of me as a silly man who just draws pictures. As a novelist myself, I get that sentiment. REI hoped to open the park in mid-May 1968 after they put down $1.3 million, which included renovating Mystic Caverns with new handrails, safety features, and lighting, and called them Dogpatch Caverns. To give the place a truly authentic appeal, actual log cabins built in the 1800s and situated in the Ozarks were taken apart and brought in, then reassembled with tedious dedication in Dogpatch. To accompany the cabins, a grist mill was found on the property and restored to working condition. It operated grinding corn into cornmeal, which was packaged for sale in the gift shop. They had a candle shop, pottery center, photo studio, wood carving and glass blowing by local artisans, and honey from their own apiary. Oh, and trout fishing, of course. Dog Patch opened on schedule May 17, 1968, to immediate success. 8000 on opening day, 300000 the first year, and bringing in profits worth 700000 in today's money. The members of REI squabbled for a bit over what to do with the profits until local businessman Jess Odom came on the scene, late 1968. He signed an agreement with CAP. Dogpatch would use Lil Abner intellectual property for 30 years through 1998 and Cap would receive 2 to 3% of the park's gross profits. Because he now had controlling interest in the park, Odom went all out, putting in $350,000 worth of rides before May of the next season. He started the Miss Dogpatch contest, which became an annual affair. Rustic hillbilly pop culture in the late 60s and early 70s provided much of the park's success, and by 1972, the addition of a sea lion exhibit and a motorboat ride brought even more hilarity to REI's original promise to Cap about the park's dignity. It all sounds great, you might say. What could go wrong? Many point to Odom's 1972 decision to debut Marble Falls Ski Resort to keep the place open year-round. Wait, skiing in the south? Yep. He used snow cannons and made an ice skating rink. In a documentary by Red 63 Productions, Bud Pelzer, owner of Dogpatch Village in 2018, described a situation called blue ice. When the sun would melt the snow, then at night it would freeze. With more snow dumped during the day on top of the ice sheets, you ended up with one of the fastest ski slopes in the world. The snow cannons were fed by a huge air compressor and by water from a well capable of producing 300 gallons a day. The snow cannons caused the water pressure to dramatically decrease and the lights to flicker. Lord help ya if you were taking a shower when the cannons came on. This ended up costing Odom far more than he envisioned to the tune of 
a $22,000 a month utility bill, and he had to close the ski resort on October 1st, 1977. In the mid-70s, CBS cut all the rural-themed TV shows, including Green Acres and the Beverly Hillbillies, in favor of shows with urban settings. Add to that Al Capp's problems, his political satire getting a little too dark, and little Abner, plus his assault charges from Goldie Hawn and Grace Kelly. Plus, he retired in 1977. And you end up with a downhill slope for Odom worse than blue ice. Interest in the park declined throughout the 80s with the success of nearby Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri, in part because the Presleys had set up live shows there. Sitting on $3.5 million of debt, Odom tried throwing new attractions at the wall to see what stuck. A sled run, a puppet theater, a space flight simulator, concerts and celebrity appearances, none of it worked. Ultimately, the park closed October 14, 1993. It went in and out of ownership for more than a decade, but nobody did any kind of maintenance and the derelict park became overgrown. In 2005, the then-owners, Ford and C.L. Carr, let a teenager named Pruitt Nance, whose grandfather originally owned stock and dog patch, ride his ATV around the property. He hit a wire strung between two trees at throat level and was nearly decapitated. Doctors didn't expect him to survive. They certainly didn't expect him to ever get his voice back, and when he did both, he and his father, Stuart, sued the cars, saying they put the wire there on purpose. Eventually, both Nances were awarded ownership of the park and its land because the cars couldn't afford the lawsuit. But the Nances were no business people. They had no vision. Enter Bud Pelser, who I mentioned earlier. He had gone to Dogpatch in its humble beginnings and loved the local artisan angle with the glass blowing and the wood carving. He envisioned a nature-focused Dogpatch village to benefit the local residents, and he purchased it from the Nances in 2014. He and some friends cleaned up the place, then opened it to the public. 5,000 people came to see the park after its 21-year abandoned existence. Unfortunately, Pelser's business partner backed out for health reasons, so the park had to be shuttered again. But there's hope on the horizon. Johnny Morris of Bass Pro Shop fame has bought the land, and he's got a very cool nature-themed vision for the place, much like his Dogwood Canyon Park. According to travel blogger Johnny Burton of TPF Travel out of Branson. Back to the trout farm roots it goes, so locals are excited. Thanks for watching.